Next up, I'd like to introduce our invited speaker for this workshop, who is Marco Simon. Um, he is uh, part of the executive committee in the uh, humanoid, uh, not sorry, not the humanoid, the 3D Simulation League of the Robo Cup, and a professor at Bayer State University. Uh, he focuses on artificial intelligence in uh, multi-agent systems uh, as, in his research, and we're very happy to have him here uh, and introduce us a bit to the 3D Simulation League and uh, what the developments are there. Thank you, Jasper. I will try to share my screen to put the presentation. Uh, you should be able to do it. Yeah, okay. Is it okay? It is appearing for you? Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, my name is Marco, as Jasper has introduced, and I'm very uh, glad to be here in this presentation, this talk. Uh, because as Oscar said in this introduction, uh, I, I am engaged in the RoboCup initiative for more than 16 years. And uh, uh, since the early years I, I, I became to work in the RoboCup uh, community, I have understood that the soccer challenge is split into leagues uh, with the purpose to uh, a foster the development of many of the, the micro challenges uh, that are present in the RoboCup long term goals. So, we need to, to develop humanoid hardware, uh, other kinds of hardware, and also multi agent strategy for physical robots and sim simulated robots because all these initiatives uh, must converge to the same goal. So we have, must have, uh, we are supposed to have uh, some convergence points in the middle of this path uh, to the 2050 RoboCup goal. Uh, I think we are very close to one of these convergence points uh, between humanoids, physical robots, and simulated robots. And this is the, 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 the main point of this presentation, and I think it's the main purpose of this workshop and this uh, this competition, this virtual competition that was finishing, that is finishing at this moment. Uh, so my my presentation will talk about Centurio, the soccer simulation 3D league perspective. Uh, we we was uh, following the the development of the new simulator for the uh, humanoid league last year. Uh, we saw that. The, it was a great work in a very short time. Uh, a feasible simulator was, was presented and we could run a competition in the virtual RoboCup uh, worldwide competition. Uh, and, and we can see that uh, an important, an important uh, fact, factor to, to make this can happen was the, the funding from RCF. Uh, we have a, a, a very hard time to maintain our simulator because our simulator is a community-based simulator, is open software, and we need volunteers to work on that. So volunteers make a good job, but they make it on their time and not in the time that we need. So we cannot go too fast, faster in the evolution of the simulator. And so I think that is a very important point that RCF uh, starts to fund some uh, strategic projects like a, a humanoid simulator to be a standard simulator for the RoboCup community. I think this is a, an important point. We can try to go towards this point. So I will give an overview of Soccer Simulation League because it is possible that most people here are uh, from Physical Robots League and maybe they have heard about simulation leagues but don't know uh, some details about the leagues and the purpose of the simulation league so i give you a, a short overview for soccer simulation league and after that i will talk about the some initiative that is being uh, uh, executed in the last years towards the integration uh, to the high level ai and also to the uh, you, uh, physical robots
Okay, the Soccer Simulation League is one of the oldest leagues in the Robo Cup uh, with the Soccer Simulation 2D. It was uh, created since the pre Robo Cup in 1996. And the, the main point of Soccer Simulation 2D is how would be strategies and team play for robots in the 2050 Robo Cup challenge, Robo Cup goal. So when robots have very good skills, uh, skills almost almost perfect skills like human skills, for example, how they can play. So the soccer simulation today is, is concerned about uh, strategies, team play, and soccer more than about skills. That the that's the point for soccer simulation today. So when you see uh, 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 these uh, small circles representing robots, we are seeing that long-term future robots, robots that can kick very fast and, uh, and with a, a very high accuracy in their kick and can move in an um, omnidirectional fashion, very, fashion very, very fast and can perform skills uh, in, a, in a so efficient manner that the uh, team play and the multi-agent strategies would decide the game. That's the point of research in the soccer simulation 2D. As it's the, one of the oldest leagues in the Robo Cup, we have lots of knowledge produced during all these years and we have lots of publications and we have uh, many, many uh, uh, interest uh, things that were discovered and presented to the community during all these years. But uh, it was, as I said, they don't care about current robot skills. They are thinking about future robots that will be more perfect, more efficient in skills than current robots. Uh, they have a robust and stable simulator because of the, the maturity of the simulator. It's a community simulator developed by the, 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 the teams during the years, but it's very stable. And a question that was emerging uh, for many years, how can we move all this knowledge from more than 20 years of experience in the 2D soccer scene to real robots? We, we, we would like to experience some of this uh, uh, knowledge in the real robots. Well, first answer for this question was done several years ago when the soccer simulation 3D was created. Soccer simulation 3D was created to uh, be a, a kind of approximation from soccer simulation league to the physical robots world. Uh, it's a humanoid model based on the robot now at this moment, but in the past we have used other models. Our simulator uh, can accept uh, different models. Uh, as we, have, we are using the now based model, uh, maybe many people think that our simulator is a now exclusively robot simulator, and it's not. You can create any uh, models, not only humanoid models. In the first years of uh, soccer simulation 3D, the robots were a kind of sphere with legs, some kind of thing like that. I, I was not part of the simulation at the time. I, I was part of 2D simulation, but I, I, I watched some match, a kind of sphere with legs, the first robots. And after that, you, you uh, use another model, a humanoid model. And now use a now based humanoid model. Uh, for many years, uh, we are using this model. Uh, we also have a, 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 a 11 versus 11 support. That it was a, a very important goal during the development of soccer simulation 3D. In the first years, we we play we were, were used to play uh, six versus six, and after that, we was uh, enhancing this number. I think we get to nine versus nine, and after some time we could play eleven versus eleven. It's a, a, a hard requirement for circuit simulation because it's uh, very important to support the validation of strategies from two D soccer scene. So the two D soccer scene, uh, since the, the the early years, was developed for eleven teams, eleven players teams. So we need to to, to uh, be compatible with this this uh, team formation, so you can try the same strategy developed in the multi-agent community in the 2D soccer scene. Uh, so it's a hard requirement for soccer simulation to play 11 versus 11. 
uh, use a 20 by uh, 30 meters field in our simulator. Skills are not abstracted by simulator. It's one of the main difference uh, when you compare 3D and 2D simulators. Uh, the, in the 2D simulators, robot skills, as I said before, is completely uh, uh, abstract. But uh, when we, we go, go to 3D simulation, uh, skills are not abstract. So the agents must really control the motors that move the joints of the robot. Uh, in a, a, a analogous manner that we do in the real robots. Uh, so agents send the joint speeds in radius per second to the simulator, and the simulator just move the joints in that speed uh, up it receives another, another command, another speed. So we needed to build the skills like we, we would do in a, a, a real humanoid robot, just controlling the joints. But this is abstracted by the simulator. Uh, the agents don't receive a, a set of uh, uh, video frames as we would do if you were receiving information from a camera. They receive a kind of post-processed vision information that is uh, a, a set of relative vectors to the objects captured by their cameras. Uh, this is a decision in the uh, simulation league because uh, we think that considering that there are lots of cheap cameras available to, to be used in, in research with uh, real cameras in real robots, uh, it's not useful for soccer simulation to perform a research in computer vision using a kind of simulated camera. We cannot see any gain from this kind of uh, work so we abstract the vision and we, we, we consider that the vision system is working okay in the, as, be, as best as they, uh, it can. In the simulator, send to the robots uh, a, a set of like, relative vectors that uh, is the, the results of the vision process. The now model is a 22 degrees of freedom robot. Now it has a, an image of the, these joints here. Uh, it's, uh, every joint is a, a, a single uh, degree of freedom uh, joint. Uh, the, the model is also equipped with one gyroscope and one accelerometer, two force resistance perceptors, one on each foot, one restricted vision perceptor that simulates the, the idea of the camera. As I said, we, we call this a, a vision perceptor because it's not exactly a camera, but is the result of a uh, the processing of a vision system. Uh, one here and one say effector. Uh, this is uh, uh, very important because in easy robots to communicate themselves, but in a limited uh, uh, communication channel. So we have a, a shared uh, channel that all robots in the same team use this channel. So uh, only one robot can use the channel at any timing. Uh, and uh, the channel is limited to 20 bytes, so only short messages can be exchanged between robots. It is very important for coordination. And you have one game state perceptor to, to make the robots know things like scores, time, fouls, and the other things that happen during the game. Né? As I said before, the simulator supports lots of different robot types. Currently at the RoboCup 3D competition, we use heterogeneous models uh, of now robot. We have the standard now model that uh, uh, is the type zero, but we have uh, another uh, other four uh, variations of now. We have the type one that is a, a, a version of this standard now with longer legs and arms. We have the type two that is, has the same dimensions in, in the the parts of the body, but has a faster ankle pitch and a slower ankle roll speed. So we have one, some joints that have a, a faster speeds and some joints with lower speeds. And we, we can uh, uh, check what is the impact of these changes in, the, in the, the model. The type three has longer legs and arms uh, in the same manner as the type one, but they also have a wider hip. Uh, and you have the now type Four, that is the now tools model, where you add the tools in, on the feet, no? and uh, 
for this we add two more joints and we have also add two more foot resistance perceptor in the the the, the extreme part of these tools right and we, we got some very interesting results some teams has presented some interesting kicks and the other movements that could be learned using these tools so Soccer simulation is about this. We need to test some innovations in the hardware model and check. So if you would create a robot with tools, it would be a good idea. The soccer simulation is a place to test this kind of thing. So that 3D soccer scene is seen by RoboCup Federation, by the RoboCup trustees as a bridge between simulation and uh, real world and real robots. But uh, it's like uh, we are in the middle and being uh, pulled from one side by 2D simulator and for other side by physical robots leaks. Because we need to uh, approximate 3D simulation to the physical robot, but we cannot go uh, far from 2D simulator. In, in, uh, in the, the opposite side, we need to go closer to 2D simulator because one of the... Uh, 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 gaps that we, we perceive that is that 2D teams uh, still have some kind of difficult to migrate their strategy to 3D simulation. So we developed some strategy in the, in the last year, we, we launched a, a new challenge using a fat prox that is developed from a Magma Offenberg team. We, I will talk about it uh, in the, the next slides. And in the other side, we also had some years ago, uh, an initiative trying to develop a more realistic simulator using Gazebo uh, with a, a plugin, a now plugin, but this strategy has not uh, uh, going, going on uh, due to lack of manpower, as I've said before. Uh, in the beginning, we expected that the people from OSRF would do a, some kind of job developing it, but they they, they could not give it some priority for these, and we need to work in, with the community. Some people from the community, for the teams from 3D leagues, work in, and did something. I will show you what we, we did, but it's not enough to to replace our current simulator, the SimSpark and the RoboCup Soccer Server. And now we have another uh, step that was started in the other direction, from the physical leagues towards the 3D simulation league. That is the we bought simulator that was developed in the last year by the Humanoid League and that is using this virtual season that is finished now. So there are some initiatives in both sides. In the uh, side of 2D simulation, the FET, Magma Fact Prox, it uh, provides the agents two abstract commands that is similar to the commands used to buy the 2D simulator. A dash command for movement and a kick command for kicking. So the, the agent the, the needs only to say a dash and he send a, a forward, backward uh, speed, a left right speed, so each of these two movement, uh, and uh, the orientation of the robots, the robot needs to uh, uh, turn uh, his axis to be facing another uh, 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 that direction uh, is used by a third angle uh, uh, parameter. That's the parameter that is passed by the dash. Uh, the robots using the uh, uh, fat prox can only move using the dash command. They cannot control the joints directly anymore. Uh, what the fat prox do, it, uh, it converts the abstract command that it receives to a a standard uh, Magma from Book team walking uh, skill. So Magma from Book has a very good walking skill in the, the, the their regular team in the 3D simulation. They, they translate the, the dash command to the, the, the walking skill. The key command is also based on the 2D simulator, but in this, in this case, we do not use a, a, a a, a real kick from the, the a team from like Magma from Berg, we simulate the kick in the same manner as the traditional simulator do. So uh, the ball is moved by the simulator using the power or distance 
uh, desired for the, the kick, the angle, uh, uh, horizontal and vertical angle. The difference here is that we use the third dimension that 2D simulation don't use. The 3D simulation only use uh, 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 the, uh, the two, two dimensions, uh, the X and Y. Uh, axis here use the z axis and the third dimensions to 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 perform kicks that can go high kickers not only kicks in the on the ground so the, uh, using these we can see here that uh, 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 last year we ran a uh, robocup in robocup 2021 you know the fat rocks challenge you can see uh, a little bit about this. You can see the kicks, especially, are are, are very clear. That are not uh, uh, a real humanoid kick. Is a, a kick like 2D kicks. Uh, and we have four teams from all teams from 3D league participating on this challenge. We invite teams from 2D league, but we uh, had not for the uh, this engagement of 2D teams uh, uh, up to now. We, we repeat this challenge this year and we uh, expect uh, expect to, to get more teams involved and try to uh, some of their to this proxy, the, uh, to the simulator interface and we can see a uh, strategy running in humanoid robots. Uh, 2D strategy on humanoid robots is a way to take 2D and 3D closer to each other. In the other side, uh, here is uh, the, the target of uh, a challenge in during RoboCup 2017. Uh, we have a now model uh, in, this, in the gazebo simulator. Uh, the, the, we could only play uh, with one robot in the simulator. We could not make uh, soccer games with uh, three versus three, four versus four. It, it was uh, the, the, the simulator could not run because we have few people working on it and it, it was not ready uh, in, in time for the, the challenge. So we, we make some kind of walking challenges to see the teams trying to walk, but we have very few teams that participate in the challenge. Uh, teams is very hesitant to make, change the low level, level implementation of their agents to uh, adapt them for a new simulator is uh, an important issue when we think about changing the simulator. And now we have the Webot bots that is the, the simulator for the Vitro Agile Kids Size uh, competition. Uh, uh, I have seen some logs and during RoboCup 2021, I, I see parts of some games. Uh, I, I always talk with Genaldo Bianchi, that is, is part of the, the TC of the uh, Humanoid League, and he always tells me how, how works are, were going with the simulator. I, I had not, not much time to, to see much things about the simulator, but I have a, a, an idea how it works. Uh, we have discussed that last year during RoboCup about this, about the, 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 the chances to walk towards uh, this simulator. And uh, uh, the, the mo most members of uh, 3D simulation are very worried about uh, some issues about uh, uh, match durations. Uh, I, I remember on that time, in, very near the RoboCup, you, you, you need to change some things because uh, matches are, 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 are taking. Uh, more than one hour, or maybe some hours to, to finish, and it's not feasible for 3D simulation to have so much long match mats. We need to be to keep. It. I don't know how we could work towards this requirement. Uh, so people from uh, committees in the 3D simulation was not so uh, enthusiastic about that yet. But I hope we can convince that it's a good alternative. Another approach that is a ground simulator learning uh, GSL is an approach that is led by Peter Stone and his research group uh, in the last years. And they, they, present, they presented uh, many recent works where they propose a, a different thing, not to try to get the super realistic simulator to attend the, 
the needs of uh, physical leagues and uh, uh, make the simulator teams to adapt to the simulator is maybe it's very hard to be achieved. And the proposal here is to make a kind of wrapper in the simulator. So it's what is called a, a grounded simulator. Uh, the idea is to collect some real world stage action trajectories, some stage action transitions from real world experiments and use these to ground the simulator as they call this. The simulator ground, but basically do the, 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 the follow. The, as the, the policy that you are using the simulator uh, agents uh, decide to execute some action A in the stand T, uh, we use a ground function. They use a ground function to replace this action by uh, another action A hat T that is uh, an action that makes more sense for a physical robot. Now, for example, if you have a, a, a new annoyed robot that is a, has a leg on the, 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 the foot and you say it to uh, go this leg in a 108 grades, in the simulation, they you do this, but in a physical robot, it's impossible. So they will not do, the robot will not perform this action. They will limit this action. So the ground, uh, the ground function we replace actions that is feasible in the simulated environment by an action that would be acceptable and feasible in the real robot. So the idea is to use this function as a wrapper in the simulation and make the agents learn a policy that can be useful for their physical robot, even if the simulator is not so realistic. That's the main purpose. I will not give you uh, uh, more details because we have uh, a, a time that is not so long, but I, I recommend you to check the reference of the, uh, this publication from the Peter Stone's group. I uh, have some uh, recent publications in 2020 and 2021 that uh, explain more details about this approach. But I think the, I, I, I'm talking about this approach because I think it's one thing that we must consider in the discussion about what is the, 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 the path we must go through to approach physical leagues and 3D simulation leagues. And I think this presentation presents some points for discussion. Uh, I think it's a, 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 a motivation for the, the discussion that will follow this presentation. Uh, the first one is, can we enhance uh, 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 and uh, any simulator, Gazebo or WeBoss or any other simulator to meet the soccer team requirements, especially the 11 versus 11 matches and match durations in a short time, like 10 to 20 minutes in, at maximum. Uh, at present, uh, the, 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 the 3D simulation matches uh, uh, goes from 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the the hardware speed that, that is used by, by the simulator, but not more than 15 minutes uh, in, in, during competition setups. Uh, easily creation of new robot models, I think it's not a problem, but it's a, a requirement important because we need in the simulation to try futuristic models and novel ideas for hardware in the simulation. It's uh, one of the, 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 the uh, missions of the simulation league, but I think it's not a problem because uh, the CISPARC simulator, our current simulator, supports this. And uh, uh, as far as I know, Gazebo and WeBoss, there is uh, uh, easily also to create many kind of robot models in these simulators. And is the adaptation of current 3 d as seen agents. As I said before, uh, teams are very hesitant to need to develop again all their low level, the interface and simulators. Uh, we need to give very good reasons for that to teams uh, stop and pause their research, their, their research goals and work maybe some months to adapt the low level of their simulators to another simulator. And uh, we, we need to give you very good reasons for that. Uh, and uh, it's very, it was very clear for us when we, we ran the Gazebo challenge and we, I think one or, one or I think two teams participated. Our league has from 10 to 12 teams the last years, but very few teams uh, uh, engaged in the gazebo uh, uh, challenge. We have more teams, 14, not 
so much, but uh, more than the Zebu challenge, we have four teams in the Fed Prox challenge, for example, that has um, less uh, requirements for changing. And the last two points, it's about GSL. Can it be an option? Instead of trying to get a, a, a very realistic simulator, a super realistic simulator, is it an option to move knowledge from simulation to physical robots, to just uh, use uh, a, a pure simulator like Spark that is not a so realistic simulator, but using a, a wrapper, a, a grounded simulation, uh, to make the robots to learn uh, a policy that is feasible and is useful for a real robot. During the papers that I, I, I listed before, uh, uh, the team from uh, 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 University of Texas at Austin, they uh, made this piece using the SysPark, that is the official simulator for 3D simulator. They used the gazebo, that now model in gazebo, and they used the physical now robots to make the, some experiments and they choose to, uh, uh, they, they uh, have very good results. They really could learn policies in the simulator, in the Spark and in the gazebo that is uh, better than the policies they were using previously in their physical now robots. So I think it's something that we must look at that maybe we cannot, we not need to uh, direct our efforts to try to create a super realistic simulator that runs 11 versus 11 uh, matches in a hardware that is accessible for many research groups. In, because if you have a super computer available for everybody, all, of course we can uh, have, uh, run these 11 versus 11 matches. Uh, and maybe it's not the, the, the right path. I'm not saying it's not an answer, it's a question. You need to discuss, it's a point for discussion. And another point, if you think that GSL is an alternative, uh, the simulation competitions can run using a grounded simulation. So the competition would use a ground simulation or not. Or the ground simulation is using only to transfer knowledge to physical robots. The question also is not a, a, a sentence. So that's some points for discussion. Uh, I thank you, the organizers of the workshop and the committees uh, from the Humanoid League for this uh, invitation. There's opportunity to be talking here. Uh, I'm thinking that it's very important to, to, to start this discussion. The, the approximation between uh, Simulation League and the physical robots is uh, a, a requirement, uh, a business requirement uh, of RoboCup Federation. And, we must engage ourselves on this uh, goal and try to do our our best for this. Uh, you can see my email and a link of uh, address about uh, some sites of our team and the uh, social networks. Be, feel free to contact me using any of these uh, channels. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Margot, for the nice talk. Uh, I think uh, if you're open to it, we have a little bit of time for some questions. Um, so if anybody has a question, please feel free to just unmute yourself or um, open, raise your hand if you feel more comfortable about that on the Zoom uh, participants list. Uh, maybe I can start out with a question. Something I didn't quite get was, what kind of uh, real-time factor are you? Um, do you think is is or do you have at the moment? And what kind of real-time factor do you think is uh, still feasible for uh, the 3D simulation league? Uh, you mean about the match duration? Um, yeah. So the the match is it playing in basically in real time, or is it uh, oh. slowed down because it has to calculate for a longer time? Okay, uh, we have a, 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 an option to uh, use, if you have a, param a parameter in the simulator that is a real time parameter. When we, we turn this parameter off, uh, the simulation can go very, go very faster. We use this for training. When we are running uh, learning algorithms, we use this, uh, this uh, property turned off. So it, it can run very fast. Uh, but in the current simulation, when you turn on this parameter, it tries to meet a uh, uh, 20 milliseconds uh, simulation cycle. 
So we have a 20 milliseconds of stimulation cycle, even if the agents send commands faster than these, and it's usually uh, it happens, uh, the simulator will uh, follow the 20 milliseconds uh, simulation cycle. So maths can be uh, 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 watched by people. You can run the competition where people can watch the maths. So during the competition, you, we, we uh, turn on this parameter and uh, we have a 20 milliseconds simulation cycle and a match has a 10 minutes duration. So we have two times of five minutes uh, and we have uh, 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 the, this, this, this factor speed. If you are using a good hardware, if the hardware is not so good, maybe this, the simulation runs in a, a, a several speeds lower than the 100%, that is the, 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 the the, the, the ideal, the, the goal, uh, and maybe the mesh has a, 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 a real duration of 13 or 15 minutes. Uh, so, so they simulate 10 minutes in 13 or 15 minutes if the hardware is not so good. But if the hardware is okay and you have a service speed of 100%, uh, during the competition, we can have match exactly with 10 minutes. Uh, I don't know if it's the... If it yes, the yes that answers my question. Uh, so there is a question in the chat. Uh, what are your thoughts on ISEXIM by NVIDIA, um, which seem to have a real-time factor really high um, with the portal realistic vision feed? Um, yes, I I have uh, uh, seen something about this uh, uh, simulator, but I have the opportunity to try it, and uh, no one in the uh, uh, 3D simulation or soccer simulation committees also have opportunity to try it. I think it is uh, uh, an option that must be considered also. We, we need to consider all options and see what is the, the better path, the, the path that we can reach in a, in a short time. I think we can we do not, we do not need try something that would last several years to be achieved. We, we must try to do this as fast as possible. And all options that can shorten this path must be considered. Uh, we really have problems with manpower in the, the simulation league. Uh, it's very hard to get people working on this kind of thing like test a, simul a new simulator and uh, uh, make changes in the simulator. You really need people to have free time to do that. And people are not. Uh, with lots of free time. So uh, we need to check, test it. I, I read some things about this uh, exact scene simulator and I think it is uh, uh, a good candidate, but we need to test it. Any other questions? Um, then I have another question. <laughs> uh, so how are the games refereed? So if a player commits a foul, um, is there a human intervening or is it uh, done automatically? Uh, at this moment, you have an automatic referee. Uh, in the rules, uh, it, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a preview of the human intervention if something uh, strange happens of some teams uh, complain oh the simulator has a bug it's not correct the automatic referee has a a, a, a mistake so uh, if it's some team complains the automatic the human referee after the match will you watch the log and decide if it, there is something wrong uh, i don't remember that the something really wrong that has happened in the last years uh, sometimes a team says, oh, something's wrong. And they, when the human referee goes to watch the log it, together with the team, they see that no, the automatic referee is correct. And the automatic referee it, uh, is responsible to uh, define all, 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 all decisions in the game, including some kind of faults. You have some kind of faults in, in the match. Some is technical faults due to simulation feasibility uh, uh, reasons. For example, we, we have a, a, a touching fall. If we, lots of robots begin to touch each other, like a crowd of robots, we uh, apply a touch fall and we 
uh, apart this robot one for each other because if you let this happen the simulator will explode the robots begin to explode and the simulator is not uh, cannot support lots of collisions the the, the high time uh, high uh, number of collisions is a problem for the simulation because it it generates lots of calculus in the in the in the, in the physics engine simulation of the simulator and it is uh, you need to create some kind of faults to avoid these situations to happen uh, but you have created a charge model that is a really full model if your robot try to uh, bump other robots to 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 make a fall the the automatic referee can detect it and the robot is moved uh, for to outside the field At this moment, we do not uh, charge of or like a, a, a free key about uh, being charged about fall. And if you have charged by a fall, you have a match only of free kicks in some, in some cases. So uh, we decided to keep in the beam penalty for the robot that uh, is charged by a fall. So he's beamed from, to a place outside the field uh, if he, he is charged by a fall. Uh, so teams, some teams have started to work to avoid falls, to avoid colliding to the opponents. Uh, is a, a, a math mod that was developed initially uh, by our team, by ERT and Team FC Portugal, and then the other teams engaged in this initiative, and we enhanced this model, and it's implemented in the automatic referee. And it controls the time, the, the scores, the other falls kinds, uh, we have a, a script that changes sides automatically in the half time. Many things happen automat automatically in the, in the competition, especially the automatic referee is very good. Thank you very much. Um, I actually have, have a other... question. Yeah, Go I ahead. do. <laughs> so uh, you have also uh, some technical challenges, uh, right? So are they also yes. uh, automatically evaluated or you look at the logs after? It uh, depends on the challenge. Uh, for example, during several years, the last five or, or, or six years, we had challenges uh, based on skills. For example, we, have the, we had a, a walking challenge that is to foster teams to walk or run as fast as, pos as fast as possible. We have a kick accuracy challenge to make Teams to develop uh, uh, accuracy in kicks, uh, kicks that goes in the as near as possible to the target, especially longer kicks. Uh, we have a, a goalkeeper skills challenge where a, a goalie is uh, receives lots of shots and try to do their best to to defend their uh, his goal. And all these challenges was developed in a, a platform provided by Team Magma from Berg that is a, a challenge tool. All these challenges are available in this platform. It's an open source uh, uh, tool that is available in the Magma repository. And uh, uh, these skill challenges are, are evaluated automatically, automatically because this uh, challenge tool can count the points based on the rules of each challenge. Each challenge has its own rules, but they are uh, coded in the, the tool and it, 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 they can uh measure and evaluate the accuracy of kick and the speed of robots etc in the in a, in a automatic manner uh some other challenges are not so automatic for example uh when we uh when we, we run sometimes ago uh drop pin challenge that is the idea to use the one robot from each team composing a team and see how they play together with the robots that they not know the the, the 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 ai and the skills uh the metric you use for this is that the, the robot comes the points of the match from the of the team that they participate it's not a too precise metric because a robot may not contribute too much in the in the match or not we cannot find a, a way to to automatically measure the, the contribution of the robot in that dropping team so sometimes it's not so precise uh, the uh, fat prox that it was a catalyst last year that we repeat this year uh, is a, a soccer tournament and the, 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 it is uh, controlled by the automatic referee but using that abstract command that I have explained before. 